I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Exodus chapter 32. We have spent a couple of days so far in this chapter, and we've looked at the first six verses today. We want to pick it up in verse 7, and I'm going to read down through to verse 14, and we will see how far that we get today in the time that we have. Of course, we are looking at the awful sin of idolatry. Uh, in this particular passage where the people call for the golden calf in verses 1 through 6 in the absence of Moses. And they asked Aaron to make them gods to go before them. And rather than standing up against those people and being a leader, Aaron approves their plan. And uh, we then we saw his action in the making of the golden calf. And then his attempt to combine calf worship with Jehovah worship. And God looks at it as apostate worship. Now, we want to see God's reaction to all this in verse 7. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest forth out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. And they have gone, they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation." And Moses besought the Lord his God, and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains, to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn away from thy fierce anger and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. So what we want to see and at least cover today is verses 7 through 10 at the least, in those verses, we see that the Lord calls for judgment upon the nation of Israel. And then in verses 11 through 14, we're going to see that Moses calls upon God for mercy. Notice in verse 7 that the Lord warns Moses of their sin. It says, the Lord said unto Moses, go get thee down. Focus, it was God's will that Moses went up into the mountain. It was God's will that he was there as long as he was. Even though the people had corrupted themselves, they could not blame their sin on Moses. He was simply doing what God had called him to do. And now God tells Moses, Moses, it's time to get down from the mount. Go get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest forth out of the land of Egypt. Gogus says, have corrupted themselves. Friends, some of the worst corruption that we can see as a people of God is when we corrupt ourselves. And sadly, many times, you know, we like to try to blame it on the world or our neighbors or our family or things of that nature. But the truth of the matter is that every single one of us will give an account to God, that every single one of us have choices that we have to make. And nobody can corrupt you. You have to make the choice that you will allow yourself to be corrupted and the bottom line is you corrupt yourself. And we need to be very careful that we do not allow any corruption in our lives as a people of God. May it be our desire that like the psalmist in Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, that we would say, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So here God warns Moses that Israel had corrupted themselves, he warns Moses of the sin of Israel, and then goes on and clearly identifies what they have done, and he identifies it as idolatry. Notice in verse 8. And God tells him exactly what they've done. He says, they have turned aside quickly 
out of the way which I commanded them. Notice there was a specific way that God had commanded them in. And God says they've turned aside out of that way. And just as a side note, friend, let me say this, that God has commanded every one of us in his way. He has given us every one of us directions on how we are, are to live our lives as a people of God. And we need, to be, we need to be very careful that we do not turn aside out of the way that he commands us. Then he goes on to say this in verse 8. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. God clearly identifies their idolatry. And... Uh, there are some commentators who will claim that Israel only broke the second commandment here, but the evidence reveals that they actually broke also the first commandment. They, they had not only worshipped other, they had worshipped other gods in Egypt, and now they had returned to that worship. Joshua twenty four. Joshua twenty four, and in verse fourteen, it says, "Now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth." And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Friends, the danger of hanging out in Egypt is that you will worship their gods. You will bow down to them. And we must remember that God sees all and that God knows all. We, he, he, he tells them in verse 9 of Exodus 32, The Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people. In other words, I've seen what they've done. I know where they're at. And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. We need to be very careful of following advice or giving advice like follow your heart. Now, no, friends, the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? In the book of Proverbs, it says, he that follows his own heart is a fool. And friends, God knows all and God sees all. And God not only sees what we do, but God knows even what is in the heart of man. He knows what is behind why we do what we do. Listen to what Jesus said in Mark, in Mark rather, chapter 4 and in verse 22. Mark 4 and in verse 22. Let's go back to verse 21. It says, He said unto them as a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be put on a can set on a candlestick for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested neither was anything kept secret but that it should come abroad the book of hebrews i believe it's in chapter 4 maybe in verse 13 says that all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do in other words, you may be able to hide things from me. You may be able to hide things from your preacher. You may be able to hide some things from your family, from your parents, from other Christians. But friends, you cannot hide anything from God. Everything is out in the open to him. And when he looks at your life, what does he see? Are there areas of your life that you need to repent of and that you need to make right before God? You need to seek him when it comes to the area of sanctification in your life and say, God, please reveal to me the things in my life that do not bring honor and glory to you. And then as we close this passage today in Exodus 32, we see God's twofold offer in Exodus 32 and verse 10. It says, Now therefore let me alone that my wrath wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. He says, here's a twofold offer. Let me destroy Israel, and then I will make great nations, Moses, from you. And we see here that Moses is now going to go before God, and he is going to beseech God on behalf of the people. But praise God, friends, that we have a merciful God. Without him, where would we be? Well, we'd all be in hell today is where we would be without our merciful God. But then praise God also for those who pray for you, those who beseech God on your behalf and ask God to work in your life, especially at times that you've walked away from him and that you're not living as you ought to live. And they pray and ask God for his mercy and for his long suffering upon your life. But friends, may we be very careful to live our lives in a way that brings honor and glory to him and not be guilty of these sins that are mentioned in this passage. Have a great day.